the Kotlin 1720 release is out. And with it come a lot of goodies for you to try out and use in your own code. So let's take a look at some of the highlights in this release and make sure we get you ready to explore everything by yourself. There is a lot to talk about. There's news around the K2 compiler. There's a preview for a new operator, dot dot less than range until. Kotlin native gets its new memory manager enabled by default. Inline classes can have a generic underlying type for the first time on the JVM. The standard library expands its support for uh, file tree traversal. And there's also a bunch of other things. So it is my pleasure today to be your tour guide and give you at least a cursory overview of everything. As usual, you can find all the nitty gritty details and all those notes that didn't make it into this video on the what's new page on kotlinlang.org. But for now, you can just sit back and enjoy some Kotlin updates. We kick off our journey with changes to the compiler, more specifically K2. The Kotlin team is still working really hard towards stabilizing the K2 compiler. It's in alpha right now, as we announced in Kotlin 1.7.0. But now it supports several new compiler plugins. Specifically, it supports all open, which makes classes annotated with a specific annotation, as well as the members, open without needing to explicitly put the keyword there. It also supports no arg, which is the compiler plugin that generates an additional zero argument constructor for classes that have a specific annotation. That's going to help you work with things like the Java Persistence API, so JPA. The SAM with receiver plugin also works, which makes the first parameter of an annotated Java single abstract method interface, so a SAM interface uh, method, a receiver in Kotlin. And everyone's favorite extensions for Java code, Lombok, are also supported. If you are using atomic operations in Kotlin uh, and you're doing it the idiomatic way, uh, then you're probably using atomic foo, which is now also supported in K2. Parcelize and JVM ABI gen also join the list. What's important to keep in mind is that, at least for now, the alpha version of the K2 compiler only works with JVM projects. It doesn't support Kotlin JS, Kotlin Native, or any other multi platform project constellations. And as you've probably heard a million times by now, we of course encourage you to check it out yourself. Uh, we have instructions on how to use the K2 compiler and how to test it with your own code on the What's New page as well. There's also some links there on how to talk to K2 developers directly, stay up to date with the developments, give your feedback and report any problems you might face. If you want to dive a little bit deeper uh, and learn more about the new compiler, there's two more videos which will also link below the road to the new Kotlin compiler and the new Kotlin K2 compiler expert review. Okay, moving on. Next up are new language features. Specifically, we have two new experimental language features included with 1720 that are worth highlighting. Firstly, a new experimental operator joins Kotlin, the dot dot less than, or more appropriately named, the range until operator. Range until allows you to express open-ended ranges. So on a very basic level, you can kind of think of it as a plugin replacement uh, for the until function that served a very similar purpose. But under the hood, there are some more significant changes. For example, that these ranges are represented using a different underlying type called open end range. I have prepared another separate video dedicated to this new operator and some of the motivation as to why it was introduced. And there we also have enough time to kind of cover why the previous approach with until wasn't perfect. In fact, it was a bit of a hack and also how the situation is going to improve. That video should be linked here on screen as well as in the description, so maybe check that out when you're done with this video. Secondly, also still experimental but definitely worth checking out, is data objects. They're conceptually identical to regular object declarations in Kotlin, uh, but they give you a clean two-string representation right out of the box. If you want to see me work through an example of data objects, guess what? There's another video for that. We're going to especially take a closer look at how data objects work great together with sealed class hierarchies and how they end up making your code more symmetrical. All right, moving on, we have changes that are affecting the Kotlin JVM target, at least currently. Specifically, what's worth highlighting here are generic inline classes. 
Now, inline classes are, of course, everyone's favorite feature in Kotlin for bringing value semantics to the language, ideally without introducing too much runtime overhead. With the 1720 update, they're gaining a new superpower, at least experimentally and on the JVM. And that superpower is that for the first time, we can make our inline classes generic. Now, this mainly helps with one big thing, type safety. In situations where you would previously have to use any, you can now properly specify generic types, you can constrain these types and have Kotlin translate this to appropriate bytecode on the JVM. I do genuinely believe that inline classes are easiest to understand when you really take the time to walk through an example, as well as examine some of the mechanics behind the scenes to understand what's really going on, and more importantly, what you might be missing. So guess what? I've got another video for you that talks just about generic inline classes. It's kind of like a mini Kotlin online event or something. Anyway, make sure to take a look at that when we're through here. Because we are not done yet. Moving on to Kotlin Native, there is quite a significant milestone happening there as well. Because Kotlin 1720 for the first time comes with the new Kotlin Native Memory Manager enabled by default. Not only does that mean better stability and performance, it also paves the way for promoting the new Memory Manager to beta. Now I'm sure there'll be a lot of content and plenty of time spent on exploring Kotlin Native's new Memory Manager in detail. But in the interest of brevity, I just want to focus on a few highlights that are really worth pointing out right here as well. For some context, the previous memory manager made writing concurrent and asynchronous code complicated, including issues with implementing the Kotlin X coroutines library. At least in part, this is something that hindered the adoption of Kotlin multi-platform mobile because concurrency limitations created problems with sharing Kotlin code between iOS and Android platforms. This new memory manager now blazes the trail to promote Kotlin multi-platform mobile to beta. In the new memory manager, freezing is deprecated, uh, which makes it easier to call Kotlin suspend functions from Swift and Objective-C from threads that aren't the main thread. The new memory manager also comes with support for the compiler cache, which makes compilation times comparable to previous releases. Of course, I had to glance over a lot of details here, so for a more in-depth explanation of what the new memory manager is and how it works, uh, I would suggest you take a look at our original blog post for the preview version. The documentation for the Kotlin Native Memory Manager might also provide some deeper insights, so we have those linked in the description as well. Clearly, this is a pretty significant change to our ecosystem, so we would appreciate your feedback to make it even better. Besides these huge news, also new in Kotlin Native is the ability to customize the info.plist files which you might need to do for your iOS use cases. So specifically, while producing a framework, the Kotlin native compiler generates this information property file info plist. Uh, previously, it was kind of cumbersome to customize the content of that. Now in Kotlin 1720, there is a bunch of properties that you can set directly, like bundle ID, bundle version and others, um, which you can either set directly as a compiler flag or through the Gradle DSL, and that will customize the file for you. All right, and with that, it is time to talk about my favorite Kotlin library. That's right, the standard library. In 1720, we are getting experimental functionality that allows us to traverse file trees. Now, these come in the form of new extension functions for the Java NIO file path class. There is a handful of them. Walk lazily traverses a given file tree rooted at the specified path, returning you a sequence. Visit file tree allows you to customize the behavior of how you want to traverse file trees. You either first build your file visitor separately, which defines the actions on directories and files when traversing them, or you just provide that logic using a Lambda. Now using those new experimental APIs looks like what you can see right here. So specifically, a file visitor can determine its behavior whenever it visits a file or a directory. Since each of the lambdas return a file visit result, you can also do things like exclude specific directory subtrees based on conditions or the like. Now, obviously, this very basic example that I had to cram on the slide here doesn't do much of that. It just prints all the directories and files with their respective prefixes. Uh, here, we're calling it on the source folder of the project itself. 
and we do that by passing my visitor to the visit file tree extension function. Kinda nifty and definitely useful if you're working with nested folder structures in your code. Ooh, that was quite the colorful mix. Of course, what we looked at here was just an excerpt of the new things that you can try and find in the latest version of Kotlin. On the What's New page are additional topics like Gradle news, the included bytecode optimizations for delegated properties, IR support in the capped stop generating tasks, and a few others that unfortunately didn't make it into today's video. But most importantly, that's also where you can find installation instructions and anything else you might need. But as I've mentioned a bunch of times before, your Kotlin update video journey does not have to stop here. There's a bunch of other videos that detail features that are fresh off the press. The new range until operator, generic inline classes and data objects all have their own little explainer videos that really dive deeper into those topics. So if you haven't had enough of my face or my Kotlin code yet, go take a look at those next. I am fairly certain that you're gonna see something new and exciting. All right. Have a nice Kotlin and take care.